Uh, my name is Jansen, and I'm just going to tell you guys how the sodium potassium pump works. It's a pretty important uh, physiological uh, mechanism that's constantly being used. So basically, it's a protein, and I like to think of it as a mouth that can open either to the inside of a cell. So this is, uh, this is the inside of a cell. You think of it as like a muscle cell, a nerve cell, and here's the outside. And uh, basically what happens is it's got three locations for sodium to bind and two locations for potassium to bind. And the whole point is to get sodium on the outside of the cell and potassium to the inside of the cell. And so how it does this is when it's in this form, when it's open to the, the inside of the cell, sodium really likes to come in here and bind these little spots here. It's a nice little environment for sodium to bind. It likes to be in there. And then we have this uh, ATP. So it's in this conformation when ATP is bound. And basically what happens is ATP gets hydrolyzed and turns into ADP and you lose a phosphate. And by breaking this phosphate bond in the end of ATP, you release a small amount of energy. And so that causes, what, what causes it to happen is it changes shape. And you kind of think of it as so it's, a, it's open mouth like that to the bottom and breaking that ATP molecule up kind of forces it open up the top. And so at this point you have sodiums bound and they just kind of want to hop off. They don't want to be in there anymore because the shape of the protein doesn't agree with them. But now this shape, it does like potassium. So potassium comes in and binds and it's only two of them that can bind. So every three, that, three sodiums that go out, two potassiums come in. And then ATP comes and binds to this again, and what happens is it it reverts back into its normal state. Potassium hops off, so now you get two more of these guys in here, and you now have for each cycle you have three three sodiums on the outside and two potassiums on the inside, and so what this creates is what's called the diffusional gradient, and the cells can use this diffusional gradient to, um, for example, signal. Um, they can use it, like in muscle fibers, they can use it to start uh, the, the, um, the cellular machinery for contractions. And so, to explain that, I'll take a nerve cell, for example. So you have, let's just pretend this is an axon. And this is, again, this is outside. This is inside. And thanks to the sodium-potassium pump, we have a bunch of sodium outside and we have a bunch of potassium on the inside. And these are, these are all ions, so they all, all have a little bit of a charge to them. And what this charge does is it gives the membrane an actual voltage. And it's negative because there's more positively charged sodium ions on the outside than there are negatively charged potassium ions on the, on the inside. And so what happens is in a nerve cell, we have specific channels. So one of these could be a uh, voltage-gated sodium channel. The other is a voltage-gated potassium channel. And when the starving nerve impulse comes and reaches the axon where there's a bunch of these channels, these things open up and you get a huge influx of sodium and a huge efflux of potassium. And this causes the membrane potential to go from a negative charge to a positive charge. And this just propagates all the way down to the cell, gets to the end of a cell, and you get calcium, calcium influx, which causes um, neurotransmitters to be released, and then it, it repeats again until it reaches a target uh, cell or location, muscle, another nerve fiber. Um, and so that's why you need the diffusional gradient, is because you need a bunch of sodium out here, and you need a bunch of potassium in here, or else you can't get that flip in membrane potential in the communication. And so the cool thing about the sodium-potassium pump is that after this occurs, you have all this sodium on the inside, all this potassium on, or all this potassium on the inside, and no, no. Sodium on the inside, potassium on the outside. And in order for it to get back to the normal, um, normal uh, charge, ATP, uh, sodium potassium pump, pumps sodium back out and um, brings potassium back in so that it can have that same membrane potential. And something interesting, when you go to the dentist and the doctor gives you a shot of lidocaine, what he's doing is he is blocking this uh, voltage-gated sodium channel. So now you have all sodium outside, 
sodium can't get through there. And so you don't get a, um, the nerve impulse propagated to the next cell, which means you don't feel pain. So that's how, how it's applicable.